Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxwell here from the Back to 12 podcast, and I'm going to be giving my Big 12 record predictions and final standings in today's video. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn it from red to gray to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long from football, men's basketball, women's basketball, who just got 25 k from Le Level 13 Agency. Shout out to y'all for that. And then we're going to be talking about every other athletic program on campus as well. But don't forget, we're also going to be talking the broader scope of things, which is the new Big 12 and the current Big 12. So you're going to want to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. But let's jump right into this. Starting at number 10 and going to number one, it's got to be Kansas, right? When you look at what Kansas has and what they've done, I love what the coaching staff is doing there in Lawrence, but they're still miles and miles away from actually being relevant on the gridiron um, anytime soon in Lawrence. You think about it, outside of their week one matchup against Tennessee Tech, they're not going to be favored or probably even remotely close to favored in any game this year. So I think when you look at it, they'll have a couple of steps forward, but the record will indicate it. I have Kansas going 1-11 this year, winning their only game of the year in their home opener and their season opener against Tennessee Tech. Now we move on to number nine, and it's West Virginia. I have the Mountaineers going 4-8 and eight this year. And listen, I get it. They, they got a great OC in Graham Harrell. They got JT Daniels in the portal but their schedule is rough. Listen to their away schedule and road schedule this year for the Mountaineers. Start the season against Pitt. Then they got to go to Vatek, go to Austin, go to Lubbock, go to Ames, go to Stillwater. That is rough, especially for a team that there's definitely some talent there, especially at the quarterback position. The coach on the offensive side is pretty solid, and same can be said for the defensive side somewhat. But overall, I just don't know if the talent is there for the Mountaineers to compete in a year where I think the Big 12 is going to be wide open, but I think that that means there's a lot of teams that are actually really, really solid, um, and maybe the Big 12 is top-heavy when it comes down to it. But I think overall, when you look at this, this is probably Neil Brown's last year in Morgantown. Think about this. Matt Wells, who was at Texas Tech, beat Neil Brown all three times they played. All three times they played, and Matt Wells no longer has a job. So there's that. So I think Neil Brown, this is probably his last season. If this record prediction does come to fruition, 4-8. and eight. And again, I have the Mountaineers finishing ninth in the Big 12 Conference. Now at number 8, there is a tie between two Texas schools. We'll start out with TCU because I think they lose to the team that is in 7th. Um, I really like the direction that TCU is going. I really do. I like the Sunny Dykes hire, the continuity of keeping a guy in the Metroplex who was at SMU, just got to travel down the highway a little bit to Fort Worth. He knows the area. I really like what TCU's doing, but much like Texas Tech, it is going to be hard to win a lot of games in the Big 12 with a first year head coach. That could be said for any major Power 5 conference in America. It's just difficult unless you're coming into a situation much like a guy we'll talk about here in a little bit, and Brett Venables, who has a ton of five-star and four-star talent, right? But when you look at what TCU is doing, I think they have a lot of great athletes. I think they're going to be put in a position to succeed, um, but they're going to struggle at some parts as well. And same can be said for Texas Tech, who I have at seven. And I have both of these squads going six and six. If you listen to the video that I posted about oh, maybe two weeks ago now, about where I think Texas Tech realistically finishes in the Big 12. It's at 6-6, six and six and I had them in 7th. And now, there's a lot of questions in Lubbock, right? This is what Red Raider fans want to know. Um, what can Joey McGuire do in his first year? And I'll say this, I absolutely love the coordinators that Joey McGuire went out and got. Um, and Zach Kitley and DeRuiter, I think that you got two impact coordinators. The thing is this, when you look at the key positions on the field, does Texas Tech have the necessary depth? Let's start at the quarterback position. Yes. Let's start at the running back position. Yes. Let's go to the wide receiver position. I don't know. There's a lot of question marks. Same can be said for offensive line. Same can be said for defensive line outside of Hutchings, Bradford, and Wilson. Same can be said for the linebacking position. And then you go to the DBs and safeties where I think you have a lot of depth there. So really how many boxes are you checking off when it comes to those 22 that you're going to have on the field when it comes to offense and defense in terms of position groups? Maybe four out of six if you're pushing it, but it's probably three out of six. And I think you can say the same thing 
for TCU. I absolutely love the direction Texas Tech is going with Joey McGuire. I'm very interested to see who the quarterback will be. As of today, I think it will be Tyler Shuck. A lot can change in fall camp, which just started yesterday at the time of this recording for this video, which is August 4th. But to me, I think Texas Tech finishes ahead of TCU just because, well, they have the same record, but I think Texas Tech beats the Horned Frogs in Fort Worth after all that trash talk um, that's been going on between the two fan bases. Now, let's go to number six, where I have the fighting Matt Campbell's Brock Purdy is gone, but really I have Iowa State going seven and five because I think Matt Campbell is arguably the best coach in the Big 12. He will not have the most talent on this team. It will not be close in that regard. But I think he gets the absolute most out of every player on his roster. And I think he continues to do that this year. I'm very interested to see what Matt Campbell does at the quarterback position without the aforementioned Brock, Brock Purdy, who was uh, Mr. Irrelevant in this past year's NFL draft. I really want to see what they do because they have some talent there. Sure, it's not, you know, the Oklahoma UT perceived, you know, five-star, four-star talent. But again, Matt Campbell just seems to always get the best out of his guys. So I have them finishing sixth in the conference, going seven and five and making another bowl game. Now at number five, this might surprise some people, but I'm just a guy where it's a, I will believe it when I see it. I have the Texas Longhorns finishing fifth in the Big 12 conference, going eight and four. And it really comes back to, I refuse to be a part of the media that continues to hype up Texas when they've shown us absolutely nothing for the past half decade, at minimum, right? They've shown us nothing. There's a lot of questions with this UT squad. Not one thing you can't question is their talent. They have a ton of talent. It's just, can these coaches put them in the proper position to succeed, and do the players play up to their potential? I think some do. I think some don't. Obviously, the biggest question mark is Quinn Ewers at the quarterback position, who people are putting him in the Heisman discussion, and I think he's a good quarterback, but people, he hasn't started a Power 5 game. He's only taken three snaps at the Power 5 level. Like, we can't just anoint this guy the next savior of Texas. And again, I'm just tired of this media going out there and basically saying, like, Texas is back, Texas is back. Texas, is, Texas has not proven anything to us in the past half decade. Until they prove something to me, I'm not going to have them any higher than fifth. Eight and four is generous, I feel like. Remember, they went five and seven last year. They didn't make a bowl game. OK, so until they prove something on the gridiron and actually get tangible results, this is as high as I can have Texas. And really, it just comes down to I actually like Sark as a coach. I think he's an offensive genius. I think they have a ton of talent. But until they prove it to me, I'm not going to have them any higher than fifth. And this is the team that probably shocks people that I have ahead of them. And that's the Kansas State Wildcats. I think they are, you know, I don't even think about it. They are my dark horse to win the Big 12 this year. I love Deuce Vaughn. I love Taylor Martinez, who I don't know how the hell he still has eligibility left, but he is the quarterback transferring from Nebraska. And we know that K-State is going to play defense and just really muck it up, right? There's no game where you're watching Kansas State and you're like, man, this is absolutely electric. This is an electric game. This is fun, right? Like they just muck things up, but it works for them. And who cares if they muck it up as long as they get results and they will get results. And I had them going eight and four. And the reason I have them ahead of Texas is because I think the Wildcats beat the Longhorns when they inevitably face off this season. Now getting into the top three, we got two Oklahoma schools and one Texas school. And we will start out at number three with Oklahoma State, who I have going nine and three. Um, I try and be as transparent as possible when I'm right or wrong on things. And I have to say this about Oklahoma State. I was wrong about Spencer Sanders. I, I was just dead wrong. He is a very good power five quarterback. Is he one of those guys that's going to compete for the Heisman? No. But is he going to lose you games in the power five anymore? No. In fact, he's probably going to help you win, i.e. a perfect point is the Fiesta Bowl last year against Notre Dame where he almost single-handedly brought Oklahoma State back to win a New Year's Six Bowl. And it's not an almost. He did. It wasn't obviously all him. The defense helped. Oliver on that D-line is an absolute menace as a true freshman. And speaking of the defense, that's where the major question mark is for me with this team. I think Oklahoma State's got a very solid offense, but the defense transition from Knowles to Mason. Mason was the head coach previously at Vanderbilt. Now the D.C. once Knowles left for the D.C. position up in Columbus for, with the Ohio State Buckeyes. 
What's the transition like? Is there much of a um, grace period? Like, do we figure things out and just hit the ground running? Or is there a game or two where they sputter um, come conference time if they're not facing as much competition in non-con? So I'm very interested to see what Oklahoma State does. That being said, I have them going 9-3. and three. I think they're a very good football team, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if they end up winning the Big 12 Conference. Now, at number two, I have Oklahoma what I said about first-year head coaches is kind of negated here just because of how well Brett Venables kept players at Oklahoma, but also, more importantly, used the recruiting class and the transfer portal to really come in and help got, take you know spots from Caleb Williams and other guys that transferred out. Oklahoma's always going to have talent. It's just that simple, right? So Brett Venables goes back to where he was a coach previously, now the head man there. I'm just more interested to see what the offense looks like because you know the defense is going to be good with Brett Venables as the head man. Is Gabriel the answer at quarterback? I don't know. Like, I I, I just don't know. Um, also, give General Booty a shot. It's a great name. I just wanted to throw that out there. They have a recruit commit called General Booty. So um, every chance you get to say General Booty, you're going to take that opportunity. But back to, back to actual, um, I guess factual stuff or opinions that don't really pertain to general booty. Um, Oklahoma, they're going to have a good defense. We know that with Brett Venables. The offense is the major question mark. Is Gabriel the answer? They're going to have skill guys out in the backfield and out wide. The offensive line will be great. But what does it feel like and how much of a drop-off is there from losing Lincoln Riley as a play caller going to, you know, a guy that's coming over from Ole Miss? Like, what are we? What, what's going on here? You know what I mean? So, I'm very interested to see what their offense looks like. That being said, I do have them playing in the Big 12 title game in Arlington against the only team left in the Big 12 right now that I haven't mentioned, and that is the Baylor Bears. I am all in on Blake Shapin as the quarterback uh, for the Baylor Bears, and more importantly, I am all in on Dave Aranda. Dave Aranda, in my opinion, is the best head coach in the Big 12. Him and Matt Campbell dueling it out, I'd probably take Dave Aranda because I mean, no disrespect to what Matt Campbell has done, but Dave Aranda and just building upon what Matt Rule has done and really putting his own stamp on there and hearing what players have said about him. And maybe it's helped a little bit covering Texas Tech and hearing what Joey McGuire has said about Dave Aranda. But I mean, he just feels like an absolute defensive wizard and just a wizard in terms of roster, you know, construction and psychology and everything like that. So I think Blake Shapin's the real deal. Obviously, Bohannon transferred out. I think Baylor, again, goes back and goes to Arlington and tries to win yet another Big 12 title. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. Again, I have Texas at five. Prove it to me. Prove it to me, UT. I have Texas Tech at seven. I think uh, that preseason uh, you know, poll where they were ninth, it's fair. It's definitely fair. Um, in terms of they haven't really proven anything to you. So I think the Texas Tech at nine makes a lot of sense. But I think they go above and beyond that a little bit. And they make a bowl game for the second year in a row. Again, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.